Today I have something different for you. Let's create a speech synthesizer. It in this accent. Earlier I made three videos providing background information for this video. If you haven't watched them yet, I suggest you do so now. I have compiled them into a nice playlist so you can watch them all in one sitting. Please do so now and then come back here. Click the card that opens the playlist. I will be waiting here. Unlike in the PCM video, replaying pre-recorded speech samples is not what I had in mind for this video. To recap, here is the list of phonemes that will be the building blocks of speech for this synthesizer. The bottom row lists phonemes that most Finns do not pronounce correctly, but are instead aliased into other phonemes. I think for authenticity we can do the same in our speech synthesizer. This will help keep the design simple. This is the resulting roster of phonemes. There are 22 phonemes in total. Now there are many ways to go forward from here. One of the popular approaches that leads into high quality speech synthesizers is to create a list of all pairs of phonemes that can occur in normal speech. For example, all consonants followed by all vowels, but also all vowels followed by all consonants, and of course all pairs of vowels that can be reasonably pronounced, and all pairs of consonants too. They would get a professional voice artist to record all these hundreds of samples at constant pitch and constant stress. For some speech synthesizers even triplets might be recorded. Most likely they would construct an artificial long piece of text that contains all these phoneme pairs and the voice artist would be instructed to read it as monotonously as they possibly can. Then someone would use an audio editing program and meticulously cut pieces from the recording to populate this table. The speech synthesizer would mix and select these samples at runtime. For example, this word, kivijalka kauppa, would be constructed from 15 voice samples, some of which are identical, and the synthesizer would seamlessly blend the end of one sample to the beginning of the next. For my demo speech synthesizer, I will not do anything that complex. I'm going to operate on single phonemes only. Now, I could just use recordings of myself speaking all these different phonemes, and it would not take very much time to do that at all. Instead, I designed to approach the problem in an old-fashioned way. So I made this chart. It shows how each of these phonemes might be constructed. The first 14 phonemes have something in common. The vocal cords are vibrating throughout the phoneme. For example, I can say mieleen jäävä mongolialainen viinivilialualue in a single unbroken voice using all of these 14 phonemes. Let's speak about vowels first. Humans can speak because we are able to change how our voice resonates within our mouth. Bear with me for a moment. I'm going to create an incredibly stupid sounding recording. I... Now let's clean up that audio and save it on disk. Next let's open the audio in Prat. Prat is an open source program for studying phonetics. While I was doing that recording, you heard several different vowels. My voice stayed at a constant pitch, but different harmonic overtones were created by varying the shape of airways within my mouth. In this analysis window, you can actually see what happened. In the bottom there is a blue line indicating my voice pitch. It is relatively horizontal, which means there was not much variation in it. However, these red lines represent the harmonic overtones of my voice, and they are all over the place, changing smoothly between low and high values. In speech, these harmonic overtones are called formants. In Wikipedia there is a relatively brief article about formants, including this table on typical values for the formats of different vowels. Each of these 14 sounds have different formants that make up the sound. Formants are produced by different parts of the vocal tract, including the larynx and the pharynx. For a speech synthesizer, the exact mechanism is not as important as the result. Additionally, with the V and Y sounds, there is some level of frication present. It is a little whooshing component. The whooshing sounds a bit different in each consonant. It may be higher pitched or lower pitched, 
and it may be short or long. In other words, there is a sound source and a tube that adds resonance and noises to the sound. This is called a source filter model. An audio compression method called linear predictive coding is centered around this scheme. LPC starts with the assumption that the speech signal is produced by a buzzer at the end of a tube, with occasional added hissing and popping sounds. Although apparently crude, this model is actually a close approximation of the reality of speech production. Do you have a cell phone? LPC happens to be the basis of GSM voice compression. If you have a cell phone, it contains an implementation of LPC, so I am going to use LPC also for this synthesizer. In this table, I have identified the component sounds that I need to synthesize. For the first 14 phonemes, we have voice that is modulated in different ways, plus some optional frication at the same time. The rest of the consonants are similar, except there is no voice simultaneously. I have split each phoneme into three parts, a beginning, a middle and an end. Each phoneme may have a short sound of some kind in the beginning and in the end. For example, at the end of mmm, there is a subtle sound from the lips. The middle is the part of the phoneme that is stretched as long as it needs to be to produce short or long sounds. So the total budget of sounds that I need is 17 sustained sounds, 7 release sounds, 1 glottal noise and silence. Total 26 sound samples. To generate these samples I recorded myself saying this sequence as monotonously as I could. This recording was imported in Prat. Then I edited the sound to make it completely monotonous. In hindsight, this step was completely redundant, but it was nice to learn that this research tool could double as an autotune program for bad singers. This is how the result sounds. This was then downsampled into 44 kHz, removing some mostly irrelevant detail. Then I used Prat to convert this recording into 48 order LPC. The resulting file looks like this. It's a text file that contains uh, numbers. The audio was divided into frames, and for each frame, a set of coefficients and a gain is listed. Next, I wrote a C++ program to play this file. The program reads all lines in a file and identifies their content. It saves important parameters like the sampling period, which is the inverse of the sampling rate, into variables. The coefficients are saved in an array. When it encounters the gain line, it synthesizes the frame. The frame is synthesized next. It starts by generating an arbitrary buzz. Anything goes as long as it has a clear frequency and as long as it's not a pure sine wave. Next, the LPC filter is applied. The filter shapes the frequency characteristics of the buzz that is fed to it, much like a fear filter. Basically, it's a vocoder. The resulting sample is saved into a buffer. Once the file is done with, the buffer is saved into a WAV file. And this is how it sounds. Uh, 48 was my choice for the order of the LPC data. I made a comparison for different LPC orders. Here is a short voice sample I took from one of Dr. David Wood's videos. How to stop prison radicalization. And here's how it sounds at different orders. How to stop prison radicalization. 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 I think that 48 was the sweet spot where artifacts were minimal and increasing coefficients from 48 did not significantly improve the audio to justify the increase of data. Now it is important to note that the LPC file is not a recording. It is a synthesis instruction. For example, I can modify the buzz formula and replace it with white noise. How to stop prison this changes the voice into a whisper. Or I can change the tempo, make it four times slower. How to stop. Or make it twice as fast. How to stop prison radicalization. Or change the pitch, make it higher. How to stop prison radicalization. 
or make it lower. How to stop prison radicalization. My bus formula deliberately contains a small amount of aspiration in it. If I remove the aspiration and leave just the buzz, how to stop prison radicalization. The sound becomes a bit cleaner and also more synthetic sounding. These samples are recorded at 44 kHz. If I used a much smaller sample rate, such as 8 kHz, a much smaller number of coefficients would be enough. Here is the 16 coefficient LPC made from a 44 kHz recording. And here is a 16 coefficient LPC made from a 8 kHz recording. How to stop prison radicalization. The latter was a bit more muffled, like a telephone line, but had way less chirping artifacts in it. Lowering the sample rate allows you to get more bang for your buck in terms of data transmission, and that's why telephone lines and cell phones use low sample rate. But there's plenty of low sample rate speech synthesizers out there, and I want to use a good sample rate, so I'm going with 44 kHz and 48th order LPC. So the LPC file is divided into frames, each frame representing the characteristics of the audio for a small slice of time. Next, I spent a day writing this tool, which is a modification of the wave writing program from earlier. This program allows you to adjust the parameters, such as breathiness and buzziness, in real time and to choose any frame from the recording to play. I used these to pick frames that, in my opinion, best represented the phonemes that I wanted to include in my speech synthesizer. Next, I wrote a tool that copy pastes the frames that I picked and it produced this file. It is a C++ source code. Which brings me to the next part, C++ source code. We begin with the data structure that was just generated. This saves each of the recordings as a structure. I decided to make it so that each recording can have multiple frames rather than just one for better quality. My process of text-to-speech begins by reading the text input and converting it to a list of phonemes, or rather prosody elements. First, we start by normalizing the text, removing as much unnecessary detail as possible, such as converting all of it into lowercase. I also went ahead and converted it into 32-bit Unicode, because dealing with text character by character is quite difficult in UTF-8, when a single character can span across multiple bytes. I mean, it's still not perfect even in 32-bit Unicode because of combining diacritics and stuff, but you get what I mean. It helps with this application. Punctuation must also be taken care of. I decided to add special symbols, the angled brackets that will be later reused to control the pitch of the voice. I will just leave the pitch handling blank for now and get back to it later. Now that the text has been canonized and the work in progress string should only contain pronounceable letters and pause markers, let's convert it into indexes into the sound recordings list. This code is a bit complicated for what it actually does. It basically just assigns a timing value for each phoneme, depending whether it was repeated or not. If you are interested in exploring it in detail, we can download the source code, which can be found through links in the video description, and explore it offline. Now that we have the list of records that we should use to play the speech, let's go through them. Earlier I mentioned that in my design each record may actually contain more than one frame. I decided upon three different styles for playback of these frames. The synthesizer may choose one of the frames to play by random for some variation in the voice, or it might play all of them in a sequence for use whenever a single frame is not enough to capture the phoneme clearly enough, or in the case of the trilled error, it might rapidly cycle through the frames. Whatever the method, we do need the actual synthesizer, so let's tackle that part now. This is basically the same code as in the LPC to wave converter I briefly showed earlier, but let's go through it in more detail now. I am using SFML for this project. This audio driver class is basically the exact same thing as in the PCM audio video I made earlier. Its job is just to read samples from an array and push them to the sound library. There is nothing too exciting about it. The interesting part is where the LPC frames get converted into wave audio. 
In the context of speech synthesis, LPC works so that first there is a source of noise, a buzzer, something that generates a voice that has a pitch. Anything will do, including music, as long as it is not pure sine wave. It cannot be pure sine wave, because the next step is applying a finite impulse response filter over it. This filter either attenuates or amplifies certain frequencies of the buzz, but it cannot make them up from nothing. The difference between the buzz and the filter output is saved into a buffer. The filter operates on the differences between the buzz and past outputs generated by the filter, so we use a rolling buffer. That's what the modulo operator does. It makes sure the indexes loop back to the same indexes over and over again. The latest sample is sent to the speaker. In my design, the audio chunk is first saved into a temporary buffer and then moved into the buffer that is shared by the audio engine. This is so that we can minimize the time that the audio buffer has to be locked. And this is what it sounds like. Mind you, this is going to be Finnish language text right now. It was already fairly understandable to an average Finnish listener, even if some phonemes were not as clear as they could be. There were three little problems with that short sample. First, the speech was quite monotonous. We could make it sound more interesting by smoothly altering the pitch and voice quality over time. However, that's not enough. I decided to actually model a typical flow of pitch in Finnish text reading. To do that, first, the text is divided into syllables using a rough algorithm that simply checks where the vowels and consonants are and decides that the new syllable begins where there is a single consonant followed by a vowel. Then a pitch curve is given to the sentence by keeping track where each sentence begins and where it ends and giving a certain pitch to the first and last syllable and interpolating the rest. And this is what it sounds like. The second problem is quite obvious and quite annoying. To be honest, I have no idea what is the cause of the content clicks and clacks heard in the audio, but I figured it's best to do something about them. My workaround for the clicks and pops is not very pretty. It is pretty much equivalent to fixing a broken television by beating it until it works, but hey, it gets the work done. I also decided to smooth out the frame boundaries a bit by making all the synthesis parameters change smoothly, gradually. This is what it sounds like. And that's Finnish. But the title of this video was not Let's make a Finnish speech synthesizer. This video was about making a speech synthesizer with a Finnish accent. So there is still work to do. I have to make it read English. To make it read English, I borrowed code from a very old speech synthesis program called RSynth, which in turn borrows from a research paper written at United States Naval Research Laboratory in the year 1976. I simplified the code a bit so that the two source code files, about 900 lines of code, fit nicely in one screenful, and I got myself a function that converts English text into sort of an ASCII representation of the international phonetic alphabet. Then I wrote a conversion table which reduces those phonemes into the set of phonemes used in Finnish. This function is then called in the part of my program that deals with text to phonemes conversion. And the result sounds like this. To be fair, it is very hard to understand. This is made not exactly like the typical Finnish accent, but it is pretty close in a tone Finnish manner. The text to phonem rule set is not exactly for Many people have been joking about my accent, suggesting that maybe I wrote a speech synthesizer to do the voiceovers for my videos. Well, in case you ever wondered what happened if I were to do that, now you know. 
If you liked what you saw, thumbs up the video and hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. Hit the bell icon too to make sure you get all notifications of my new uploads. Thanks go to my supporters at Patreon, PayPal, LiberaPay and other sites. I have not addressed you in a video for a long time, but you are very much appreciated indeed. As always, have a nice day and a shalom in your life.